Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Devan County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections 103. This is the Friday, June 24th, 2022 edition of Library Connections. Kicking things off with the top five fiction bestsellers for this week from the New York Times. At number one, The Hotel Nantucket by Ellen Hildebrand. The new general manager of a hotel, far from its gilded age heyday, deals with the complicated pasts of her guests and staff. Well, that sounds like a perfect summer read if ever there was one, doesn't it? But I'm digressing. At number two, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. A battered wife, raised in a violent home, attempts to halt the cycle of abuse. At number three, Verity by Colleen Hoover. Moen Ashley is hired by the husband of an injured writer to complete her popular series and she uncovers a horrifying truth. At number four, Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. In a quiet town on the North Carolina coast, back in 1969, a young woman who survived alone in the marsh becomes a murder suspect. And at number five, Sparring Partners by John Grisham. Three novellas, Homecoming, Strawberry Moon, and Sparring Partners. Moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for the week, at number one, Battle for the American Mind by Pete Hexeth with David Goodwin. The Fox and Friends weekend host makes his case for what he calls classical Christian education. At number two, I'd Like to Play Alone, Please, by Tom Segura. The stand-up comedian and podcaster shares stories of parenting and strange encounters. At number three, James Patterson by James Patterson. The author's life from growing up in small town New York to working in the advertising industry to becoming a successful storyteller. At number four, Killing the Killers by Bill O'Reilly and Martin Duggard. The 11th book in the conservative commentator's Killing series gives an account of the global war against terrorists. And at number five, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How trauma affects the body and mind and innovative treatments for recovery. Our first recommended read of the week is the new Lauren Belfer novel, Ashton Hall. Belfer's first fully contemporary work may seem a departure for the acclaimed historical novelist, but she hasn't left the past behind. Her exquisitely illuminated story offers the vicarious indulgence of a stay at an English country house combined with an Elizabethan era mystery and a meditation on women's age old struggles between independence and motherhood. Circumstances involving a beloved ill relative bring American Hannah Larson and her neurodivergent nine year old son Nikki to Ashton Hall located near Cambridge. Exploring the manor's long abandoned upper floors, Nikki discovers a woman's skeleton. She had been sealed into her room alongside a prayer desk, books, and other comforts. 
Was she imprisoned or had she lived there willingly? This isn't a standard Gothic tale of suspense. There are no supernatural elements, but this mystery does haunt Hannah. While contemplating her husband's infidelity and her lack of financial autonomy, and also grappling with Nikki's difficult behavior, Hannah reassembles the woman's life and times by a centuries old letters household accounts, and library records with the help of new friends. Belfer shows how history is a tangibly close presence. And that's the Bookless Review. Our second recommended read for this week is nonfiction. It's a memoir by Ricky Lee Jones. It's called Last Chance Texaco, Chronicles of an American Troubadour. Two-time Grammy Award-winning singer Jones delivers a crackling debut memoir recounting her roving early years. Coming of age in a struggling family of orphans and artists in Arizona, her worldview was shaped by the cultural upheaval of the 60s, as well as the trauma she inherited from her veteran father and narrowly escaped as a hitchhiking runaway. Some of us are born to live lives on an exaggerated scale, writes Jones. Divided into driving themed sections, she begins with her childhood in the back seat and makes it to the driver's seat when her career as a singer songwriter took off in 1979. Her travels inform tracks like Easy Money and Night Train with the help from a world of edgy characters and lovers who became her muses. We were religions. We converted to each other. She writes of her romance with Tom Waits. Threading her account with song lyrics, Jones creates a narrative soundtrack of her influences, including Crosby, Stills and Nash, Marvin Gaye, and Laura Nero. From a harrowing affair with heroin to bold career risks, for instance, not budging when SNL's Lorne Michael said her set might be cut short, Jones depicts both the pitfalls and bravery of living with nothing to lose. Wise and gorgeous, this story is as poetic as the songs that made Jones famous. And that's the Starred Publishers Weekly Review. Our first audiobook recommendation for this week is the new novel by Alison Fairbrother called The Catch. The audio is read by Julia Nippen. Two years out of college, Ellie Adler has a job in journalism, an older lover, and a circle of smart friends. Her beloved father, James, who has children from three marriages, unites the family with his gentle humor and charisma. But Ellie has always believed she is her father's favorite. When he suddenly dies, she finds herself devastated by the unexpected loss. Then, at the reading of his will, she learns that instead of leaving her his prized possession, a baseball that holds emotional resonance for both of them, he has left her a seemingly ridiculous, even insulting gift. Worse, He's given the baseball to someone no one in the family has ever heard of. In her grief, Ellie wonders who could have possibly meant more to her father than she did. Setting out to track this person down, she learned startling information about who her father really was and who she herself is becoming. Moving, witty, and unforgettable, 
that catches the story of the gifts were given over the course of a lifetime by family, friends, and strangers, the ones we want and the ones that catch us unawares. Moving on to our second audiobook recommendation of the week, it's the new novel slash mystery, The Woman in the Library by Suleri Gentile. What a cool title. This one's getting really great reviews too. Although I have to say that I do like to look at books anyway that have library or librarian in the title. It's a library thing. But I digress. Now let me tell you a little about the plot starting off with the fact that the audio is read by Catherine Littrell. This thrilling excursion into metafiction from Australian author Gentile wittily examines the writing process itself. Australian mystery writer Winifred Freddy Kincaid has come to Boston after receiving a prestigious writer's fellowship. While she's seeking inspiration in the Boston Public Library, a woman's scream breaks the silence. Freddie seizes on this incident as the ideal start for her new opus, which involves a group of people united by a scream. Each chapter of Freddie's book includes a letter written to famous Australian author Hannah Tigon by a dedicated fan, Leo Johnson, a fellow writer in residence who offers to be her beta reader. Hannah is writing the story of Freddie Kincaid, who's writing the story of the murder in the library. Leo's emails influence Hannah's view of her characters and subsequently Freddie's story. Leo's emails shift from sycophantic to profoundly disturbing when his novel is rejected by Hannah's agent. The agent dies a few days later and murders in the two realities begin to multiply. This elegantly constructed novel is intelligent, funny, and profound. Who could ask for more? And that's the Starred Publishers Weekly Review. Our first streaming recommendation in honor of the fact that it's summer and summertime is a great time for horror films is a horror classic. It's the film In the Mouth of Madness, directed by John Carpenter and starring Sam Neill. You could stream this one from Shudder and rent it from the usual online suspects, including iTunes, Amazon, and Google Play. In the Mouth of Madness is one of the finest films in Carpenter's storied career. A spooky tale about scary storytelling that is the coda to his unofficial Apocalypse Trilogy, along with the films The Thing and Prince of Darkness. Sam Neill stars as an insurance investigator who is hired to track down Stutter Kane, an ultra-popular supernatural horror author who has gone missing. While searching for Kane, Neil's John Trent encounters many people who have lost their minds after reading Kane's latest book titled, you guessed it, In the Mouth of Madness. When Trent tracks Kane to a small town in New Hampshire, he is surprised to find himself in the fictional town that is the setting for many of Kane's books a delirious horror movie anchored by an unforgettable performance by Neil in the Mouth of Madness completes a stellar thematic trilogy of films. And that's the Polygon Review. Our second recommended stream for this week is the film Trees of Peace, which features an ensemble cast and can be streamed from Netflix. Trees of Peace is the writer-director debut for Alana Brown. It tells the fictionalized tale 
of four women from different backgrounds during the genocide in Rwanda. The women forge an unbreakable sisterhood while trapped and in hiding. They expect to need only to survive for a few days, but instead are left in a single room for months before the story is over. Rwandan actress Elaine Umphir plays a moderate Hutu who narrates the story as pages from her journal. Trapped with her are also Sister Jeanette, a nun played by Charmaine Bingwa, and Peyton, a volunteer from an American non-governmental organization portrayed by Ella Cannon. The latter two are both teachers at a nearby school. So if you're looking for a dramatic film based on real facts, check out Trees of Peace, available to stream through Netflix. And our third streaming recommendation is the third season of The Umbrella Academy, which just came out. The TV series, all three seasons of which are available to stream on Netflix, features an ensemble cast. This is fantasy. If you haven't seen it, it's got some humor to it. It's got a little bit of drama. They're always trying to stop the apocalypse. Did I mention it has some humor in it? It is kind of funny. They've got some action moves too. So if you're not familiar with it, it might be fun to binge watch it this summer. And having said that about the series, let me tell you a little about the season. Season two of the Umbrella Academy left off on a major cliffhanger when the gang time traveled from the 60s back to an alternate version of 2019 in which Hargraves had trained seven different superpowered babies into becoming the Sparrow Academy. In season three, the series is picking up right where it left off and the Umbrellas will have to deal with the apocalyptic event potentially caused by their timeline jumping. That's the TV Guide overview. Moving on to our Hoopla recommendation for this week, I'm going to recommend season one of the mystery series, Madame Blank. Let me tell you a little about it. When her husband Rory dies suddenly while on a business trip abroad, antiques dealer Jean White is shocked to learn he's left her nearly bankrupt. Grieving and blindsided, she heads to their one remaining asset, a cottage in the French antiques hub of St. Victor. She intends to sell the property and return home. But once in town, Jean discovers that not only are the circumstances of Rory's death suspicious, but also that he was having an affair. Aided by sympathetic taxi driver, Jean begins investigating Rory's death and quickly finds that the colorful locals have a treasure trove of other mysteries for her to assess too. And finally, our next section next week at the library, a brief listing of events held at the library or hosted by the library off-site for the week ahead of us. That's the week of June 27th through July 1st. And wow, I don't know where June has gone, but it certainly is going in a hurry. The calendar of event information is also found on the library's website. If you just go to ssclibrary.org online, You'll find on our homepage a big bold calendar link towards the top of the page. And if you click that, you can see all the events and programs that are scheduled to date. Just a beginning note, registration is required for programs unless otherwise specified or unless it's a program like something on Facebook Live or YouTube. And then those are available for everyone on demand. You can register for programs through the library's website by calling the library or just plain dropping by. On Monday, June 27th, we've got one program in library land. It's for kids and it is full. It's called String Art in the Park. If you've already registered for it, it runs from 1030 to 1130 AM. If you haven't registered for it, as I said, it's full. And I recommend you check out our calendar of events online to see all the great programs coming up for this summer for kids and adults and teens too. 
on Tuesday, June 28th. We have three programs to bring to your attention. The first is Adult Scrabble, which runs from 9 to 11 a.m. and is held in the library's reading room. The second program is Miss Sue's Tuesday Storytime, which runs from 10 to 10.30 a.m and which is now a hybrid program, so you can access it through the library's Facebook page, or you can come in person and it's held at Fallbrook Park. That's the park across the street from the library. And then from 6 to 7 p.m., if you've already signed up for it, or your kids have already signed up for it, I guess I should say, it's the June Junior Chef program, Apple Pie Bites. This is a pickup event, which means if you've registered for it, you drive by the library between 6 and 7 p.m. on Tuesday, June 28th, and pick up the fixings to make the apple pie bites, and then there's a companion video. If you haven't registered for this event, it is full. This is a popular series, and if you've got kids at home that like to cook, I recommend you check our calendar of events online and register for the Junior Chef programs later in the summer to take advantage of them because they are great fun and they fill up fast. On Wednesday, June 29th, we have two programs in library land. First, we have the game Meijong from 1 to 3 p.m. The location is at the library. And secondly, from 6 to 8 p.m., we have the weekly Corning Adult Writers Group. This is a hybrid program held both at the library and via Zoom. You have to register to get the Zoom link. On Thursday, June 30th, we have one program at the library. It's the Teen Creative Writing Program, which runs from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. And the program is held at the library. And on Friday, July 1st, we have three items to bring to your attention. The first is the debut of the monthly book club review by Michelle Wells. You can access that review on the Story Musing blog found at Story Musing blogspot.com then from 10 to 10 30 a.m we have science time with miss abby this is a facebook live program and finally on friday at one o'clock we have the debut of the weekly episode the new episode of library connections which you can after the fact access through facebook or youtube and here is the list of library programs contacts. So should you have any questions, you can email us, call us, or just plain drop by the library. Have questions about this weekly video cast? Let me know. You can send me an email. My email address is rhymerl at stls.org. That's R-E-I-M-E-R-L at stls.org. Or you can always drop by the library. Library hours, an important thing to know. The library is open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. On Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we're closed on Sundays. The library's website is found at ssclibrary.org. You can find a whole host of useful information on our website. To offer you a Cliff Notes version today, I'm just going to talk about three sections of our homepage that will allow you to access cool stuff. The first is the link that says calendar on our homepage. If you click that or tap it, you'll be redirected to our calendar of events where you can register for programs and see what's going on both in the library and also the remote programming we have. If you click on the word catalogs, a menu will open that will allow you to access all the library's catalogs for both physical content like print books and digital content like ebooks. And then if you click on the resources menu link, seen at the top of the page there, also bordered in red, a menu will open. And you can do a bunch of stuff through that menu. You can register to vote. You can access anti-racism resources. But today I wanna to direct you to the research and learning page on our website. So that's the third option on the resources menu, research and learning. And if you click or tap that, the research and learning page will display. And this lists some of the most popular databases that we offer, otherwise known as online research resources, but I find that a mouthful. So basically these are credible research resources, which I'm gonna to refer to as databases from now on. 
And these are available to you as a card holder, but they're not free to everyone everywhere. You get them as a card holder, but the library and or the library system pays for these. And through our website, through the research and learning page on our website, you find some of the most popular ones you can access, including Mango Languages, if you want to learn another language, even Pirate, and the Heritage Quest resource or database. And that's for genealogical research. And those are great resources. And if you're going to do really in-depth research, though, you want to go all the way down to the bottom of the page. In the last little paragraph there, it says, would you like to find more databases and resources? And then below that little paragraph in purple, it says, find the complete list of STLS databases here. That's the link you want to click on if you're doing in-depth research. It's going to redirect you to the databases page on the STLS website. And you see a photo of the top portion of that page on the right side of your screen. So here we see a large portion of the list of databases that you can access for in-depth research on tons of topics, criminal justice, the culinary arts, diversity, gender studies. There's a health database. If you want to do health research, there's one on opposing viewpoints. If you have to write a paper on a subject that has two sides to the story, which is usually the case, you can look at that. There are several academic resources if you're a college or high school student doing research. There's even one on gardening and landscaping, on the hospitality industry, and a home improvement collection too. So lots of stuff on the STLS databases page, which you can access through our website, or you can go directly to that page by typing www.stls.org forward slash databases into your web browser. StarCat and the BookMine app. StarCat is the catalog of physical library materials available to all card holders of the public libraries in the Southern Tier Library System, otherwise known as STLS. STLS encompasses the public libraries in Steuben, Shemung, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny counties. You can access StarCat online at starcat.stls.org. That's S-T-A-R-C-A-T dot S-T-L-S dot org. Or, as you might imagine, there's an app for that. It's called BookMine, and it's spelled a little differently. It's B-O-O-K-M-Y-N-E, and that will give you direct access to StarCat through your mobile device, and you can find the BookMine app in your app store. The Digital Catalog and its companion app Libby. The Digital Catalog 2 is available to all card holders of all Southern Tier Library System member libraries, and you can find it online at stls.overdrive.com, or you can download the Libby app found in your app store to your mobile device. The Digital Catalog features ebooks, audiobooks, and a handful of streaming videos. Hoopla. The Hoopla catalog features ebooks, comic books, full length albums, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. All Hoopla items are available for instant checkout for Southeast Bend County Library card holders with a maximum of six checkouts per month. And if you're listening to this and you're thinking and watching this and you're thinking, well, why is it just for? Corning Library card holders or SSC Library card holders. That's because this particular service, Hoopla, is one that the Southeast Stabend County Library pays for. The others, the Digital Catalog and of course StarCat, are collection-wide catalogs and all member libraries contribute to them. So that's what the difference is. If you want to check out the Hoopla catalog online, you go to hoopladigital.com and of course there's an app, Hoopla, for your mobile device. Social media. If you have questions about the library, you are welcome, of course, to go the traditional route and give us a call. But if you'd like to take the modern route and contact us via social media, you can do that too. The library has presences on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Library blogs. The library has five blogs we'd like to bring your attention to. I'm going to list them in alphabetical order. 
The first one is the Book Club for Adults blog, which is found at sscl.book.club, and it features, you guessed it, two posts per month that relate to the monthly book club for adults as compared to young adults or kids. And the second post for each month includes readers' advisory recommendations that were discussed during the meeting of the month and a general overview of the plot of the book that we read for the month. Moving along alphabetically, our second blog is the Corning NY History blog. That's our local history blog found online at corningnyhistory.com. It features weekly postings on Fridays that include photos from the library's local history archive and old newspaper articles of the week. Then we have Creation Stationery, the Makerspace blog found at creationstationery.com. There are occasional creative postings relating to the library's Makerspace and Makerspace programs. Our third blog is Story Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells. There are regular postings offering book reviews, recipes, and more. You can find Story Musings at storymusing.blogspot.com. You can also access all the blogs through the library's website. Our fourth blog is one that yours truly hosts. It's the Tech and Book Talk blog, a readers, viewers, and listeners advisory blog found at ssctech.com. I do occasionally include helpful tech tips because I like technology. And of course, we like technology in library land, but I'm digressing. Weekly postings for this blog include suggested reading, suggested listening, New York Times bestsellers, and a post of Library Connections videos the Tuesday after they first appear on Facebook and YouTube. And our fifth blog is called Teen Tones. It's the library's blog for young adults and has great information about upcoming programs and other items of interest found at teentones.com. And briefly, our references of the week and our catalog information. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Wishing you a cool, if air-conditioned, weekend.